In my last video, I created a real estate lead gen chatbot using the OpenAI Assistance API. And you guys gave me so much feedback that I honestly didn't even know where to start. So questions and problems and everything. So in this video, I made something truly unique and it actually impressed myself that this is possible to do and it works so amazingly that I just had to make a video about it and share it with you guys. So I'm going to show you a templating engine for chatbots that you can use to create predefined actions through AI with the Assistance API. To simplify the term is we basically use AI to create our chatbots that integrate directly with the Assistant API and whatever features we'd like. And the best of all of that is we can use that for any kind of industry. So it is completely versatile. You can customize it to whatever you need, like literally for your specific needs and not just what I predefined. If you've seen my last real estate lead gen video, I created a real estate lead gen chatbot that could search through properties, that could schedule viewings and that could create leads based on the people that are interacting with it. So if you are not specifically working only with three, three actions and you would like to have custom features it is very hard to do that because you basically would need to write custom code so what I did here is I completely revamped everything I created a completely new replit template that works in a way that we can use AI to create those tools and actions for us so that you don't need to write them by yourself anymore and of course provide you everything you're gonna see in this video for free within our resource hub so you can simply head over to hub.integraticus.com download the templates and follow me along in this video, it's also going to be a bit more special because like I did in the last time, in the last video, I didn't prepare any actions. We are literally creating the actions with AI from scratch. So I'm very confident that we can still keep the video in a short amount of time, even with creating those features completely from scratch so that you get a better understanding of how to use it and how it actually works. So since we're already familiar now with real estate, legion agents, etc., I'm going to use that as an example as well. So we are basically creating another chatbot for the real estate lead gen agents and I'm going to explain you the concept and how you can add your very own actions to the chatbot and how you set it up in the first place. We are going to use again a implementation on the website using Voiceflow. So we have the real estate lead gen chatbot here and we have our replit template right here. This is the one you can fork directly within our resource hub. So I suggest you to do that right now so you can follow me along with it. And the structure is a bit different but there are only three main things that we need to look into which is the config.py file, the tools folder and the resources folder. The resource Resources folder is basically the easiest one. It's still the same as last time. You can add any kind of information or documents in here and they will basically be used to train the assistant API. So you don't need to write any custom code. All you do is you either upload it or you right click it, add file and you add a no new custom file. And what I did here is I basically just have some standard information about the Bright Horizons Realty Agency, which is just a fictive agency that I came up with at some point with some information like phone numbers, etc. So that is what I basically use it for. You can add as many documents as you want or how how many OpenAI supports. So all you do is you just add it here. Then we come to the very first and interesting part, which is of course the assistant prompt. So the assistant prompt is the way your assistant works or whatever it should do. Like it has the constraints, it has how it should react, the features it should have, etc. And I just used the same one as from last time, as you can see here, this assistant is designed to assist users with real estate inquiries, etc. We have the key functions that it should do, which is property search assistant, schedule property viewings, and lead capture. It also has some guidelines and it has some behavior things down here. So this is something specifically optimized for the real estate agent. If you don't want to completely rewrite it from scratch, I also created a new prompt directly within our resource hub, which you will find here, which is a prompt to create a new version for that specific chatbot that also automatically leverages the Python code behind it. So you don't need to worry that you break anything with a Python code. All you need to do is you need to replace the scope, which is that part up here, where you basically just define whatever your assistant should do. So all of the features it should have access to, etc. And then you just fire that up and in the end you will end up with something that looks similar to this which also basically then creates automatically specific functions for you like property search lead capture etc so once you have something like that for your niche specifically you can think about the features that you would actually like to implement or you probably should have already done that before the instructions so you probably will have them within here if you have additional ones you can also think about them and then create them later in as a tool so right now the chatbot would basically do nothing because we have not even added any tools so to do that, we are going to use ChatGPT and the custom prompts I'm going to show you now. So 
To keep that example short, and I'm not gonna make the video too long, I will focus only on one of those, and I can either use scheduling probability viewings maybe, or lead capture, because I don't have any search API. So let's say we're gonna use the lead capture, for example. So I'm gonna create the lead capture endpoint using the prompts, and what that basically means is that I want to capture the leads from within the chatbot, from that user that is interacting with it whenever it seems fit to collect the leads, right? So what I would do is I would head over to our resource app, I'll scroll down to the ChatGPT tool ideation generator prompt, which is pretty small and looks like this so we're gonna copy that we head over to chat we paste it in here and now we are going to replace that specific part which is replace this based on your tool requirements so a placeholder for my side and the action it should actually do so now we can basically tell it whatever it should do or what the action or the tool should do so we say the action should be able to collect leads of the user collect leads of the user let's say along with real estate information if available something like this and we also would like to use Airtable to do that so the way i want that is basically that whenever our chatbot creates or collects the lead data from a user that is interacting with the chatbot i want that user to be added to an Airtable database that looks the way you would like to have it so i'm gonna tell this to this specific feature definition as well i say the lead should be added to a custom Airtable database called leads and it has the following columns. So you can add the columns that your specific database has. I just used the same one that I had last time as you can see here. So we have name, phone, email and property preferences. So all I'm gonna do is I'll say here name, phone, email, property, preferences. I'm also gonna put them in uh, double quotes just to make sure it r the AI really interprets them properly. That is just, it's probably not even a, a must. It's probably just something to ensure a little bit of higher quality. And that is all I want. So what I'm going to do now is I literally just click return and I wait until ChatGPT basically gives me a full scope for that action that I would like to create, which always consists of three things, which is the functionality, is the feature descriptions, and is the constraints. So whatever it should be careful with or, or follow when it creates that Python code that we will basically then use as a custom tool. And once it generated it, as you can see here, we can just read through that. The new tool collects and stores real estate leads in an Airtable database. Perfect. This tool is designed to interact with the users through a chat interface, gathering essential information. Okay. For the leads, we say columns are name, phone, email, property preferences. This feature is crucial for real estate. Okay. And the constraints constraints. The tool must validate user input. Amazing. If a user fails to provide information, should prompt them to fill the missing information. That is not necessarily important as the assistant API takes care of it, but I'm anyways leave it in here because we are still generating the master prompt after or basically the whole code. So the integration with Ever should use the Airtable API. That's correct. API key and base ID must be configured. Correct. All interactions with the Airtable API must be potential errors. Okay. So even in case you don't understand whatever it writes here you can also just literally copy it and continue to the next step which is copying the chat gp tool generator prompt and this is the massive one so you're literally just gonna copy that whole block down to here you paste it into chat gpt it can be the exact same chat you copy the functionality up here and you scroll in here a little bit up you replace the placeholder that i added here and then you change everything that's written under functionality i'm gonna copy the feature description i place it within the feature description down here and i will also copy the constraints so they will now be not formatted you can do that if you want to keep it very clean so basically like add your dashes in the front i'm just not gonna do that now and all i'm gonna do is hit enter and once i do that this specific prompt will create a complete tool or action for our chatbot for us so that we don't literally not need to write any specific code and this works because i built that whole backend on Replit in a way that we automatically enqueue certain tools we can use them from one specific file which means the ai doesn't need to create or deal with different files and the same information from other elements so everything is properly object oriented and can be used autonomously wherever you would like so as you can see here it creates the Python script with a tool config and everything properly the way I want it with the callback information. You don't even need to understand that. So let's just pretend we have literally no idea what we're doing. So we can read here. It says, based on requirements, I create a Python module for your chatbot that integrates with Airtable API to store real estate leads. The module will be named store leads.py. Perfect. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to copy the store underscore leads.py name. We head back into our Replit template and under tools, there's nothing in the folder right now. We re right click it, we click on add file and we add the name, click enter and create an empty file as you can see here. All we need to do now is we literally just copy that whole code 
that was written here and paste that whole code right into here. And I promise you, I'm not gonna read through anything of that. I really don't care. All I care is I follow the last instructions of ChatGPT, which says the notes here. It says full number validation, okay. Email validation, all right, it will do that. Secure configuration, the Airtable API key and base ID are read from the environment variables, ensuring they are not exposed. Okay, which means they are not defined yet since we have no variables in here. I already have added one here, which is the Airtable API key. This is because I had it from my last chatbot. If you don't have that here, which you probably will not cause you haven't installed the template so you can simply add that Airtable API key variable and you can copy your API key from within your account, uh, paste it right into here and then you're set up for that. So then the last thing we have to do is uh, we have to set the Airtable base ID secret which is something we haven't either. So we can set that as an environment variable as it mentions it here as well. So we simply click on new secret, we add it here and now we want to have the Airtable base ID and the Airtable base ID just for you as an information it's defined here in the URL and you will find it when you go to Airtable, to Developer Hub, to Web API documentation, to my first workspace, and from within my first workspace, which is a bit complicated apparently, you go to Authentications and you will find it right here. This is the way I usually find it, so fairly simple. You copy that, you paste it into the value, you add it as a secret, and that's literally all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna do anything else. I just saved that file with command S on Mac, so it's saved and now I'm basically ready to already create that assistant with the information I have, which means we have now a assistant that has access to a tool called store underscore lead. And this tool can then be used from the chatbot or access from the chatbot to create a lead in Airtable. I just noticed now within my assistant, I actually named it different, sorry, in the config. I call it here create lead. So what I'm gonna do is I just change this one to store lead just to have a little bit better quality. It will still work even if you don't do that. I just love to, like to have that information correct that I've added here. So you can basically also mention that directly within your prompt to name that function specifically the way you define it inside of your assistant's prompt. All right, so what we're gonna do is we click on run. Now, since we don't have an assistant.json file here, we will basically create one, which means an assistant is created directly on OpenAI. And if you don't see any error here, it means the server run properly, which also means at the same time that the code that OpenAI generated right here works and doesn't throw any arrow in the first place which is already a great indication that it probably works so now all we have to do is we need to actually put in the front end like we do with another chatbot and to do that we are going to use a voice flow template and that voice flow template i will provide to you directly as well through our resource hub you can simply download it import the template and you will look at something like this where you have a couple of different modules and we literally just care about two of them which is the create thread and the generate response because both of those require the url of our replit template to get that we simply head over to replit we go to web and this little button we will only see it once you ran your replit so make sure your your repl runs and then you can just right click this little icon for opening a new window and you copy the link address you head back to your voice flow assistant and in here you simply replace that your replit url and the slash with that url that you just copied and you do the exact same thing over here with the chat so that it says .co slash chat and that's literally it now you can basically publish it with whatever version you would like or whatever version it is that you're working on. Probably in your case, it's a V1 or something. And once it's published, you can embed the widget, you copy the code, you paste it on your website and you will see the icon down here when you load the page and it looks something like this. So when I open this now, I assume that the bot properly runs and you know it properly runs if it shows those exact messages. Hi, I'm John, your Bright Horizons Realty Assistant. How can I help you today? Which apparently is what I have configured directly within here in the chatbot. So at the point you're watching this video, it might be a bit different, but those two fields will still be there and you'll, you'll get the hang of that. So when this runs, we are already able to use the chatbot and that chatbot should already have access to that custom action that we created with, with ChatGPT. And we can try that out now. I'm just gonna use some prompts or some, some questions now to the chatbot to trigger that action to add me as a lead. Okay, we can say, can you please share my contact details with someone? I have questions about an apartment. Apartment, let's say in Denver, for example. So we're gonna send it off. 
and we're gonna wait whatever the chatbot basically gives us back. So what happens now is it communicates through our replit with the assistant API of OpenAI and returns us something. And it says, certainly I can help you with that. To get started, could you please provide me with your name, phone number and email address? Also, could you tell me a bit more about the apartment you're interested in? Okay, so it's basically asking questions on the action, which again indicates that the action has been registered properly, which is what is defined inside of the store lead actions right here. As you can see, phone number, name of the lead, description, description. So it creates that whole setup properly. And now we can basically just provide that information. We can say, sure, my name is Ines Moore. We can say plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven as a phone number maybe. Then we say as an email, Ines Moore at demo.test. And what else would it like? Phone number, name, and email address. Okay, we have that. And the apartment, we can say, I'm looking for an apartment in Denver to buy for around 500,000 something like this. Okay, so what I expect now is that the AI basically uses that action that we just created with ChatGPT to send information to our Airtable database right here. And here we have it. And as you can see, it already added it here. Just popped up now, looking for an apartment in Denver to buy budget around 500,000. And it added plus one, two, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, my name and the email address. So it communicates properly with it. It says as well here, thank you. I have registered your contact details and preferences. And we'll phone your team will reach out to you shortly. So it worked out perfectly. And all of that with a feature that I literally have never written. I have never really checked out. All I have done is I just added the information that it needed. So the API keys for Airtable. And you can literally do that with any kind of action you would like to have, whether it's for real estate, whether it's for health, whether it's as a lawyer or nutritionist, whatever you are in, you can literally use the template to create your very own chatbot with your very own actions without writing any kind of custom code within Python. And if things are really complex and you have to deal with multiple API requests, for example, you still have the possibility to define within the prompt, like within the ideation prompt, for example, that you would like to send information to a no-code or low-code service like Mac.com or Zapier or Integra or Publi or Microsoft Power Automate. You can just define that and then it basically will call a webhook URL or whatever is available for that automation service to start a scenario, to start a Zap, to start a workflow. And you can then do everything visually without relying on that code. So it is endlessly expandable. You can use it for anything you would like and extend it in any way you'd like for your specific business so that you can make more money, you can make more leads, you can generate more income, free up your resources, whatever is the need for it. And it's just insanely powerful and something that I already used like twice now for our clients and they love it. So I hope you have as much fun and possibilities with it as I just had. And if you have any questions regarding that or anything else you would like to see me do in the future, feel free to just drop me a comment and I'm very happy to look into that. Until then, see you next time.